Welcome back. I've recently been getting a lot of questions about the DJI Osmo Action 3 camera that I've been using, and so I'm gonna take the opportunity to answer some of those questions in this video. The first question is, why did you switch to the DJI Osmo Action 3? I've been using GoPro cameras for many years prior to getting this camera, and for the past several years, I've bought the new GoPro every year when it came out. I bought the GoPro Hero 10 when it came out in the fall of 21, and I immediately started having problems with that camera overheating. GoPro changed to the new GP2 processor with the Hero 10. That processor allows a lot higher frame rates and a lot higher resolutions, but at the cost of creating a lot of heat. And I was frustrated by GoPro's response to this issue. They really didn't seem very well in tune to the way that dirt bikers and motorcyclists in general use GoPro cameras. And they seemed to be leaning more toward people who use GoPro cameras for very brief periods of time. So I returned that Hero 10 within the 30 day return window and I just continued using my Hero 9 for the next year. In the fall of 2022, the Hero 11 came out. I ordered that camera and had a similar result. The Hero 11 had longer run times than the Hero 10, but GoPro really didn't fix the problem. They just implemented some software solutions that reduced frame rate and resolution to account for heat. The camera still wouldn't run until the battery was dead. It would overheat and shut down prior to that. So I returned the Hero 11 and it was around the same time in fall 22 that the DJI Osmo Action 3 came out. So I ordered the Osmo Action 3. So I've been using the Osmo Action 3 for about 10 months now. This camera doesn't seem to have any of the issues that GoPro has. It doesn't overheat. It doesn't really even get warm. It'll run in 4K resolution at 30 frames per second for well over two hours on the battery. This camera just works much better than the GoPro for dirt biking and dirt bike racing. And there's just no drama with it. The touchscreen works well. It's not finicky like the GoPro touchscreen. It doesn't freeze the way that GoPros freeze and you have to remove the battery and put the battery back in to get them to work again. I just haven't had any of those issues with the DJI camera since I got it. So the next question is if I buy DJI Osmo Action 3, what do I need to buy with the camera? So if you're gonna buy the DJI Osmo Action 3, I think the best deal is the Adventure Combo. It comes with several accessories. Uh, it comes with this cage that allows you to mount the camera vertically. So if you're recording videos for Instagram or TikTok, you won't have to edit those and flip them uh, in the editing. You can actually record in the vertical format. Uh, it comes with a selfie stick, which is pretty cool. I don't use this a whole lot, but um, there's some cool programming with the camera where when you're using the stick, the stick itself won't actually show up in the video. So, so that's pretty neat, it comes with that. But the best thing about the Adventure Combo is that it comes with three batteries and this charging case. I really like this charging case a lot. It lets you know the status of the batteries. You can just insert all your batteries, plug it in, and it's gonna charge all the batteries to fully charge. So uh, I really like this charging case and the fact that this Adventure Combo comes with three batteries. Next question is, do you use a case on your camera? I don't use cases just because cases typically make the audio really bad and I like to have good audio. I do use these tempered glass screen protectors. So I've got a tempered glass screen protector on the front screen and on the lens. These are like seven or eight bucks on Amazon. They're pretty cheap and they seem to be a pretty good first line of defense against rocks or whatever hitting the lens or the front screen. This, the lens itself does unscrew from the camera and you can replace it. But the tempered glass screen protectors are just a lot cheaper to replace. And this front screen would be, I think, a lot more difficult to replace if it's replaceable, I'm not even sure. Uh, but, I, but I always keep a tempered glass screen protector on that front screen. Next question is what type and size memory card should I get? I use the SanDisk Extreme cards and I use the 256 gigabyte card in this camera. You need a really fast memory card so that you don't lose data when you're recording in 4K. And the reason I use a 256 gigabyte card is because this camera will get really close to filling up a 128 gigabyte card on one charge. So 256 gives me the peace of mind. I'm not gonna have to run, worry about running out of memory. Or if I forget to format the car before a race starts or something like that, I don't have to worry about not getting the race on video. So the next question is what settings do you use on your camera? I set the resolution at 4K in the 16 by nine format. Uh, my frame rate's at 30 frames per second. I've got Rocksteady on. My field of view is set on ultra wide. There's a setting that is screen off when recording and I set that to 30 seconds to save battery. Uh, I've got my front screen off to save battery and I've got the voice control off also to save battery and all other settings are the default settings. Next question is how do you mount your camera? I have a Climb F5 carbon helmet. Climb actually makes a custom mount that fits into the chin bar of their helmets for GoPros. And so that's what I've got and that's what I use whenever I can run a helmet camera. 
If I can't run a helmet cam, I've got a GoPro mount on this Atlas chest protector here. The camera uh, is actually upside down in this mount like that. And that seems to work pretty well when I can't run a helmet cam. I've also had good luck with these Pro Shot mounts on other helmets when I'm not using a climb helmet. Does the DJI Osmo Action 3 work with GoPro mounts? Yes, it does work with GoPro mounts. It has that same type of mount on the bottom. This is actually a quick release and the adventure combo comes with a couple of these which makes that really handy um, but it's a really strong magnet and then a, and then it actually clips in to that release it's very extremely strong but this works with uh, gopro mounts does your camera break up the videos into segments yes all modern action cameras break up videos into segments usually four gigabyte files the cameras do that in case a file gets corrupted or something you won't lose your entire video also, cameras have to package files up before they can finalize each file. So uh, when the battery is getting low, the camera needs to be able to package and finalize that file. And if it were trying to package a 100 gigabyte file and finalize it, it may not have enough battery to do that. So those are just a couple of the reasons. I'm sure there are probably some other reasons why cameras break the videos up into segments, but all cameras do that. If you want to make a long form video, you're going to have to have some type of video editor that can link all those files together. So that brings us to the last question of what video editing software do you use? I use iMovie on a Mac. iMovie is a free editing program on a Mac and it's a pretty basic editing program, but it seems to fit my needs. I hope this video answered some of your questions about the DJI Osmo Action 3. It's a great camera for dirt biking. I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And I've included some links in the video description to the Adventure Combo, as well as some other things I've talked about in this video. Subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs>